Hey guys, Max here, and yesterday wasn't brilliant for the markets, but it wasn't awful either. Stocks did fall for the most part, but it wasn't an absolute bloodbath like it was yesterday. As you can see, it's just a pretty much a mixed bag. We had some big tech companies do rather poorly, Apple and Google down two and a half and one and a half percent each. Financials didn't really perform too well. Healthcare did decently. Real estate was okay. Industrials was quite poor. And consumer defensives following that trend that we saw the day before yesterday of really dropping off a little bit. The S&P 500 then, at the end of the day, it did fluctuate a fair bit. Volatility was quite high, but when it closed, it was down by 0.6%. And the Nasdaq was down by just a bit less than that at 0.4%, with the Dow Jones actually performing worse than usual, falling by 0.8%. The rest of the world was okay for the most part, but again, nothing brilliant. There was a fair bit of green though. The FTSE 100, for example, fell by 2.2% by close, and the stock 600, the European equivalent, fell by 1.4%, with the MSCI World Index, a compilation of every major company in the world, falling by 0.6%. As it stands then, it wasn't a brilliant day, it wasn't even good, but it wasn't awful either. It was very volatile though, with the VIX index spiking up to 32 at some point during the day. Well, why did we see stocks perform this way? Well, the same reasons we've seen them perform this way in the past as well. Though in particular, the Federal Reserve's Kansas City president came out and said that another 50% basis point is very likely coming into the future, that the Fed is not scared off by the decline in stock prices. And this is actually quite bad for stocks. The only hope here really for risk on assets right now is that the Fed is going to lose its goal and it's going to change its mind and it's going to stop raising interest rates because stocks are falling. And as of yet, that doesn't really seem to be the case. Now, we also got the US jobless claims report last uh, yesterday and it wasn't great either, but it was good in some parts. There were just some conflicting numbers, some good, some bad. New claimants rose by 21,000 to 218,000, whereas the expected level was 200,000. So that's obviously higher than last month, which means that more people lost their jobs last month than they did the month before. And that's not good. That could be a sign that the US economy is starting to struggle. Continuing claims, though, declined to 1.32 million, which is that lowest point in 55 years. And that is good news, especially for the Federal Reserve, who has been adamant that low unemployment must be achieved before uh, quantitative tightening can take place. And we've seen that finally happen now. So as I said, it's sort of good, sort of bad. There's good and bad. There's a silver line into a dark cloud. And so markets weren't really too sure how to price assets yesterday. Now, if by the end of today, by Friday and the end of the week, the S&P 500 closes down once more, that will then be seven consecutive weeks of declines in the S&P 500, which is a really bad streak. And that's the worst we've seen since the dot-com bubble of 2000. This is worse than any streak that we saw in 2007 or 2008 with the great financial crisis. So this is obviously not a good sign. Year to date now, I know a lot of people are forgetting it, but at this point right now in time, year to date, the S&P 500 is down by almost 19% and the Nasdaq 100 is down by almost 28%. In my opinion, there really is no denying it anymore. You cannot argue against me in good faith. We are in a bear market and the bubble has already started to pop. Now, the US dollar actually didn't perform too well yesterday. It fell by about 0.9% against pretty much every other competitor. The euro was up by 1.2%. The pound was up by 1.2% as well. They're now sitting at $1.06 and $1.25 each. Treasury yields actually slid a little bit more. Prices rose with the US 10-year Treasury yield falling by four basis points to 2.85% and the German 10-year yield falling by eight basis points. Now, why are we seeing this happen? Well, we saw a lot of safe haven bond investors come into the market recently, which is pushing prices upwards and yields down. It's pretty simple. The reason that I think that in the long run, this isn't going to be too important though, is twofold. Firstly, inflation is still very high far, far higher than the yields on pretty much any bond out there. And this inflation is not going to disappear overnight, even if we are on the latter end, the latter half of this inflationary cycle. Now, the second reason is because there's going to be continued huge amounts of selling pressure coming out of the Fed as quantitative tightening takes place and as they continue to sell off their balance sheet. 
I personally think this will be enough to overwhelm any buying pressure from safe haven investors. And as of yet so far this year, the last few months or so, we've seen yields rise. So this has been the case. Now for commodities, we saw a slight uptick in the price of oil. WTI crude oil rose by 1.7% and now sits at $111 a barrel, while Brent crude oil, the European standard, is sitting at 112 Gold had quite a strong day as well, rising by about 1.5% and it now sits around about $1,850 an ounce once more. Finally, for the crypto markets, what happened over there? Well, it was a solid day, but nothing spectacular. Bitcoin rose by about 4% and now sits at about $30,000. Ethereum rose at about 5% and now sits at just above $2,000. Altcoins, for the most part, rose somewhere in the region of a few percent, all the way up to 10% on the high end. Now, there wasn't really any specific trigger for this, just a little bit more confidence in the crypto market as we get further away from the UST and Luna collapse investors are starting to put a little bit more faith back into their investments and so inflows into this sector are continuing. Now the final bit of news for the day is that Tesla has been kicked out of the S&P's ESG index and this is a very big deal and it's garnered a lot of attention and some controversy too so we're going to talk about that briefly now. Now, firstly, what is an ESG index? Well, ESG stands for Environmental, Social and Governance, and it basically just refers to investments that make efforts to try and do good in the world. The idea here is that some investors want to feel good about where they're putting their money. And so some banks, some rating agencies, they put together funds or, or systems for judging how good these companies are, and they put them together in lists and they compare them against others, and then they promote them in that way. Now, S&P being Standard & Poor and the same S&P from the S&P 500 is obviously quite a big name when it comes to this. And their ESG index that looks at companies within the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly listed companies in the US, is obviously quite important for that reason. So what is the news that we're talking about today? Well, Tesla has been kicked out of the S&P 500's ESG index, as you can see. Now, they've claimed that this is because of Tesla's lack of a low carbon strategy and its codes of business conduct, along with racism and poor working conditions reported at Tesla's factory in Fremont. Now, that's actually quite a simple idea for the most part. The first part of that is that Tesla isn't quite as eco-friendly as a lot of people think. Mining cobalt and making batteries is actually an incredibly in energy intensive process. And as a result of that, electric vehicles are often more damaging to the environment as they're produced at the source. We then have the fact that actually a lot of electricity used to power these electric vehicles comes from fossil fuels as well. So it's not really much better than internal combustion engines. And this seems to be the sort of argument that uh, S&P have been pushing here that Tesla isn't actually as carbon conscious as they'd like them to be. And for that reason, they've dropped them from this index. Now, the second half of this refers to the culture problems that are supposedly in Tesla, in Fremont in particular. There have been accusations and I believe it's gone to court or uh, settlements with lawyers. And in short, Tesla's lost. There have been uh, cases of systemic racism in, for example, the Fremont factory. And so S&P deemed that not to coincide with the idea of governance, of doing good and things like that. And so they've dropped them from the index for that reason too. Now, Elon Musk, as I'm sure you can imagine, is not very happy about this at all. As you can see, he's come out with a bunch of tweets and we're going to quickly cover them here now. Exxon is rated top 10 best in the world for the environment, social and governance by the S&P 500, while Tesla didn't even make the list. ESG is a scam. It's been weaponized by phony social justice warriors. Elon then came out with this tweet showing the S&P ESG index uh, favoring oil companies as opposed to Tesla, claiming that they are more environmentally and socially friendly than Tesla is. And obviously, there's a bit of hypocrisy at stake here. Uh, the S&P is really a little bit corrupted here and it's getting a lot of flack. And that's what Elon's talking about. Yes, it is true that Tesla isn't a perfect company. It isn't ideal when it comes to the environment, but it is on a path to improving the environment. Right now, a lot of the electricity used to power electric cars does come from fossil fuels, but that won't always be the case in the future. And with the investment that's going on uh, with governments in the, the West in particular, with renewable energies like wind and solar, while the proportion of energy used to propel these electric cars is only going to get more clean, while the same cannot be said for producing and burning oil, which is really what oil companies do. 
the the reality is here that it just doesn't make sense for six separate oil companies to be listed on this index while tesla is kicked out it does seem like there's a double standard here at play again tesla is not perfect i'm not claiming it is but these oil companies are far far worse and the idea that you can invest in oil companies with a good conscience is a little bit ludicrous when it comes to the damage that they cause to the environment elon didn't stop there though he then went on to tweet about why he thinks this has happened to tesla and in short he basically thinks it's a reprisal for him speaking out against the democratic party against liberalism and against the left in general as you can see with this tweet here basically claiming that ESG isn't to do with environmental, social or governance or anything like that. It's really about whether or not your company complies with a leftist agenda. Finally, he came out with this tweet saying that the attacks against him should be viewed through a political lens. This is their standard playbook, but nothing will deter him from fighting for a good future and your right to free speech. And this is, of course, talking about the attacks that he's seen against himself over recent weeks since he's announced his intention to buy Twitter. But also more recently, just a few days ago, he came out and said that he used to vote Democrat in the past, but he will not vote for them in the future because in short, they're no longer the party of humility and kindness. They're now the party of uh, censoring free speech and, and things like that. Now, as for my views on this issue, it seems very, very clear to me that the rating agency's S&P is not exactly being fair or legitimate here. It does scream a little bit of corruption and like they just don't want to play fair anymore. Now, these are the same rating agencies, the ones that put together ESG, that were entirely corrupted in the lead up to the great financial crisis, that were practically fraudulent in the ways that they would rate mortgage-backed debts and things like that, which led to the housing market collapse and or an awful lot of problems and loads of wealth and millions of jobs lost. These are not companies with integrity. All they care about is profit. All they care about is pandering to their investors. And I see no reason to believe that anything should have changed this time round. And there absolutely is potential that this is a sinister act uh, designed to really tear Tesla down. As a caveat to that, I am not a Tesla investor. I don't actually like electric cars. I like big V8s and sports cars and things that sound nice. I don't plan on buying a Tesla or an electric car. I don't own a single stock of Tesla. I never have, and I think it's grossly overvalued at its current rate. So I really wouldn't call myself a Tesla stan or anything like that. But I do think that this criticism levied towards Tesla is entirely unfounded, especially when you look at what other companies are being allowed into these ESG indexes. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description to Masterworks. They can help you protect your portfolio against market turmoil through fractional shares of art from world famous artists. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets falling every week. There's also a link in the description to iTrust Capital, a site that allows you to invest in crypto through your tax advantaged IRA, which could literally save you thousands. If you think that crypto going down is a buying opportunity, then now is the perfect time to join iTrust Capital. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.